Following the Indonesian earthquake and the Asian tsunami of 2004, the humanitarian reform that took place in 2005 had created the cluster approach as one of the way forward for coordinating humanitarian responses. October of that year also saw a massive earthquake hit northern Pakistan. And while these emergencies have resulted in large-scale CCCM responses, there were no cluster activation for camp management, with camps being considered undesirable. The cluster in Sri Lanka was not activated until 2008. We talked to Kelly Flynn, who reflected on her time working in pre-cluster Sri Lanka as part of the tsunami response. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to just make a couple of comments about camp management and camp coordination in terms of the 2005 tsunami response. Uh, more than 15 years ago, I was brought to Sri Lanka to lead, uh, be a lead trainer and project coordinator for the Norwegian Refugee Council um, on an ECHO-funded project. It was called the Site Management Training Project. My uh, focus was north, northeastern Sri Lanka, IDP camps, and after following the tsunami. And this was pre-cluster, officially. Um, and so a couple of uh, realizations, I think, from contribution to the sector is that uh, 2005 was definitely a time of enforcing and understanding and the importance of training. Uh, it, for camp management and later combining this with cluster coordination. And in 2005, it was a focus on training the national authorities, non-state actors, and in this situation was the LTTE, but also host community members, IDPs, UN agencies, and INGOs working in the response. It was in 2006 that the first formal CCCM clusters were activated in response to flash flood in Kenya and Typhoon Durian in the Philippines. In 2007, the cluster was activated in Sudan amidst expansion of the UN peacekeeping force and the Darfur peace talks in Libya. In that same year, Pakistan experienced another significant flooding, which led to the activation of CCCM cluster. Here's Brian Kelly to tell us more about that response. Hi, my name's Brian. I was with IOM in Pakistan after the earthquake struck in 2005 and through the massive flooding in 2010. In 2007, Cyclone Yemen struck Pakistan, killing 19 but leaving thousands homeless and on the move in the isolated province of Baluchistan and northern Sin. Didn't gather nearly the attention of the earthquake, but it affected many people in some of the poorest parts of the country. Largely because of the trust built between the government and the international community after the earthquake, and the standard operating procedures put in place, the cluster system was activated, including the CCCM cluster. The total rec response was only seeking about $40 million, and I think the CCCM requirements were about 1 million, focused on rolling out the displacement tracking matrix and some quick household level procurements. We received support from SURF and from OFDA, now BHA within USAID. The members of the cluster included IOM, UN Habitat, Mercy Corps, and I think Save the Children. Apologies for any omissions. We broke into teams, did a quick training, went and identified all the formal sites, collective centers, and spontaneous settlements that were in the affected area. We mapped them, identified points of contacts within them, worked through the coordination on the provincial level, and got assistance to people as they largely worked through self-recovery. Baluchistan's a tough province filled with very self-reliant people. This smaller response reinforced a lesson for IOM, which we learned after the earthquake when the clusters were rolled out before they were even clusters. Cluster coordination is a service. If the service does not provide value, it will not have a constituency. It's not a meeting platform to convene implementing partners. It's a method to bring together peers to shape a common strategy, deliver what we can, and provide more value as a group than we do as individual agencies. 2008 saw seven active CCCM clusters, as well as the first IDMC's published figures on the number of new displacements. The geographical focus of the activated clusters shifted to Asia in 2009, with four of the seven clusters activated in the region. 
On the 12th of January, a catastrophic magnitude 7 earthquake struck Haiti just west of its capital, displacing an estimated 1.5 million people. Here, Giovanni Cassani shares his reflection on the CCCM response in Haiti. I think Haiti represented a very steep learning curve for CCM actors. We had to learn to respond in an urban context and in particular to manage camps by geographic areas rather than camp by camp. Uh, we had to learn how to support returns in collaboration with local authorities, the mayors, the service provider. And I think we created the concept of community resource centers to help this process. And then finally, I think uh, one of the tools that were de developed there was the uh, rental subsidy, which was a way to give cash to uh, IDPs to allow them to choose a place that they could rent and the place had to have minimum standards in terms of access to water and electricity. And that was a big game changer for the response there. Why was it unique? Because Haiti is an incredible place and anyone who has been there obviously knows about it. Second of all, because it was an urban disaster, the earthquake struck the capital city a city of two and a half million people, mostly living in uh, slums or informal settlements. And the humanitarian community had a very hard time to adapt, to respond in such a context. By 2011, eight clusters were active, stretching from Nicaragua to the Philippines. Seven years after the first cluster activation, based on reality on the ground, the Global Cluster initiated discussions around the contribution camp management agencies can have outside of camps. Typhoon Haiyan, or Super Typhoon Yolanda, made landfall on the 7th of November, killing an estimated 63,000 people and displacing over 4 million. It remains to this day one of the most powerful tropical cyclone ever recorded. One of the key highlights in working to coordinate CCCM cluster in Tacloban during the response to Super Typhoon Haiyan, or Yolanda as it's known in the Philippines, has definitely been to work alongside national and local authorities in the process. And I think this relationship has grown over the years and hopefully we've been part of the process in incorporating the framework, the responsibilities, as well as like SOPs and capacity development efforts in the Philippines since. It's definitely the way to go in how we work both coordination as well as site management. 2014 saw a shift of cluster responses to more conflict contexts. The outbreak of civil war in South Sudan at the end of 2013 led to the coordination of CCCM in protection of civilian sites with a cluster working in camps alongside peacekeeping force of UNMIS. This year also saw an escalation of the civil war in Central African Republic. The shift towards more conflict settings continued in 2015, with new clusters activated in Yemen, Iraq and Syria. Here we have Der Hayo reflecting on the Syria cross-border cluster response. Following a unique United Nations Security Council resolution, the cluster system in Syria was established in 2014. The clusters are based in southern Turkey, coordinating the provision of cross-border humanitarian assistance to northern Syria, where hundreds of thousands of IDPs are living in hundreds of informal IDP sites. Due to lack of security, the access has been the main challenge we are facing in Syria. The clusters are not able to be physically present in these IDP sites. However, with the area-based approach, and thanks to the Syrian staffs operating in these IDP sites, we have managed to overcome this challenge and to continue providing assistance in these IDP sites and reporting the needs and the gaps. A notable activation in 2016 was Nigeria, which has since become one of the largest CCCM responses. The picture of country clusters looks very similar to today as crises become more and more protracted. 
In 2017, the cluster was activated in Peru following a magnitude 7.1 earthquake and floodings. This same year, the cluster was also activated in Somalia. With 10 active clusters, 2018 chose perhaps the highest record of funding for the CCCM clusters, reaching a total funding received of over $110 million. The latest activation of the CCCM cluster in response to natural disaster was in 2019, when Cyclone Idai struck in March, triggering CCCM cluster activations in both Mozambique and Zimbabwe. And here's Rafael Abbas to tell us more. 600 persons dead and roughly 2.2 million persons were displaced when Cyclone Idai struck Mozambique. From the get-go, it was important for us as a CCCM cluster to build upon the relationships and the credibility that were established by the previous CCCM program in country. We need not explain ourselves. The government authorities, they knew who we are, what we do as a CCCM cluster. And that paved the way for a smoother, facilitated collaboration and cooperation from our entry point to building camps to relocating IDPs and even to the point of returning some of those uh, IDPs to their villages of origin.